पतो अर्हतो सम्मासंबुद्ध स नमो तस्स भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मासंबुद्ध स नमो तस्स भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मासंबुद्ध स साधु so uh, today uh, we are not going to have the normal uh, our foundation series uh, and uh, there is a kind of a, a reason for it uh, sister khema uh, uh, has kind of uh, uh, reacted badly to a treatment of radiation she was uh, going through and she was hospitalized uh, yesterday so she is uh, she is in hospital and she just called me just now before uh, this uh, talk also and i spoke to her so she is uh, stalking and she is kind of uh, has access to her phone but uh, she kind of uh, was also put on uh, kind of morphine uh, that means that she was in a pain level which was very high and was not able to sleep uh, so uh, she is in a kind of a different i think i think they, she, they have uh, told that it, they will keep her in the hospital for two uh, or three days so let us see uh, what happens uh, uh, after that uh, but uh, it kind of is a significant change so uh, as of now uh, what has happened is that uh, some of the cost of her medi medication is also covered by uh, the insurance which is there but uh, it is a kind of a nationalized thing in uh, poland so not all the costs are covered so uh, the peer who is uh, kind of uh, hosting her is kind of having financial issues also so we may start a fundraiser for her uh, and uh, if uh, possible i will uh, put the link in the uh, youtube also uh, so people can kind of contribute it will take one or two days for us to figure out how much is needed and uh, david has also uh, kind of agreed to help so uh, we may kind of uh, send an email out uh, to the group Uh, so that is uh, something it's a kind of development uh, now and uh, later on uh, let us see if if she kind of uh, goes back uh, to uh, where she was staying in the flat uh, uh, she can kind of uh, come to uh, the meetings in uh, wednesday or uh, maybe next sunday uh, we will kind of see how it goes and they are also planning to shift her from uh, uh, gedangs in poland to hungary because they uh, they they have uh, the uh, location they it's very costly for them uh, the rents over there in gedangs are very costly uh, so there is a shortage of uh, rented apartments over there so uh, they will kind of shift her also so let us see how this goes on so i just wanted uh, for the general community to know about uh, what is happening with sister kema so today uh, uh, we i did not have time to prepare uh, for a, a, a talk but uh, i have a i had a suggestion given to me about uh, a, a talk uh, which is also uh, given by bante which is from samyutta nikaya it is 46.54 accompanied by loving kindness i'll try and share this file uh, with the group this uh, talk uh, was also taken by uh, bante and it kind of points out uh, as a kind of a interesting fact about um, the uh, buddha's uh, teaching about the uh, brahma viharas and uh, as we, uh, bante uh, has told that from uh, metta we can go to the fourth jhana and uh, after that uh, you have to uh, go through the karuna mudita and upekha so those uh, steps are uh, into the other arupa jana so this is kind of uh, clearly mentioned in this sutta so this sutta is uh, important in that uh, sense that it kind of uh, clarifies uh, a important point of uh, teaching which is kind of uh, uh, something which is unique to uh, what bante is teaching us so that is the uh, uh, teaching of uh, uh, the Uh, brahma vihara so the, uh, this uh, sutta is uh, uh, has a uh, few points uh, which are kind of uh, important so we will uh, uh, i'll try and not uh, do the repetitions as much as uh, bante likes uh, to do so we can kind of uh, uh, go through the main points so uh, we will start the sutta this is sn samhita nikaya 46.54 uh, accompanied by loving kindness this is a translation by vikku bodhi on one occasion the blessed one was dwelling among the polians 
where there was a town of the Polians named Hali the Vasana. Then in the morning, a number of Vikus dressed and taking their bowls and robes entered the town for arms. Then it occurred to them, it is still too early to walk for arms. Let us go to the park of the wanderers of other sects. So now, uh, one thing is uh, 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 a normal thing is Pindapath, which is uh, the morning arms round. So uh, the monks uh, normally uh, will uh, uh, means uh, exit the monastery or the place of residence at the dawn. At the dawn time, uh, when the uh, when you are able to discern the leaves from the sky. So when you look at the uh, a tree, you are able to discern the leaves. Uh, individual leaves that that is the uh, enough light for them to go out of uh, on the arms round but some certain times what happens is uh, the town itself are uh, 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 the towns people don't uh, wake up early uh, and uh, they uh, they have they have to kind of spend some time to, for let the towns people to kind of get up and uh, get the food ready so uh, one other point over here is that this is a uh, park for other wanderers of other sects. So th th there is a kind of a uh, feeling over here that uh, the, there was not uh, that kind of a separation as we find over here uh, in our uh, 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 current life where uh, the communities don't meet and discuss. But in uh, uh, the time of the Buddha, there were uh, different uh, thoughts and different communities, uh, the leaders and ascetics, they would come to a, a certain place where they, they would uh, sit together and discuss. So this is one point which you have to uh, see that it was kind of a more open and uh, uh, area and where they used to kind of uh, see how what works. They were not dogmatic enough uh, that they said that it is only... Uh, uh, that uh, what uh, we do is correct and uh, what others do is uh, incorrect. That is also there a part of the, uh, pe uh, there were sects which were uh, saying that it is what we do is the correct, uh, only correct thing. Others what are, are doing all are wrong. But uh, this is a, a kind of a good point that uh, they uh, go to a park where every uh, other sects are also there. Then those bhikkhus went to the park of the wanderers of other sects. They exchanged greetings with those wanderers, and when they had concluded their greetings and cordial talk, sat down to one side. The wanderers then said to them, Friends, the ascetic Gautama teaches the Dhamma to his disciples thus, Come, Vikkhus, abandon the five hindrances, the corruptions of the mind, that weaken wisdom, and dwell pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with loving kindness. So uh, this is the instructions of Brahma Viharas, which they are kind of uh, giving. Likewise, the second quarter, likewise, the uh, third quarter, likewise, the fourth quarter, thus above, below, across, and everywhere. And all as to oneself. So as you give to all, you give it to yourself also. There is a, a kind of a controversy in uh, uh, loving kindness also there, where they say that you should not send loving kindness to oneself. But uh, over here in the Buddha's instructions or the instructions which as uh, they are kind of uh, repeating of the Buddha's instruction, it is mentioning that you should also send it to yourself because if you have loving kindness in your heart, that is when you can uh, share with others. Dwell pervading the entire world with a mind imbued with loving kindness, vast, exalted, measureless, without hostility, without ill will. Well, pervading one quarter with the mind imbued with compassion. Likewise, the second, the third, the fourth quarter. Thus, above, below, across, everywhere, and to all as to oneself. Pervading uh, the entire world with a uh, mind imbued with compassion. So, in the same way, uh, uh, altruistic joy. Altruistic joy, but uh, 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 the Bhante Vimal Ramsi says it is just joy. Joy is a factor of enlightenment. So, but uh, it is also uh, widely kind of considered to be an altruistic joy. That is the you uh, rejoice in somebody else's uh, fortune. So, uh, somebody has good fortune. Somebody has uh, something uh, which is going uh, well for them. 
so you uh, say uh, you rejoice in that and one of the uh, phrases which i use uh, is anumodana when somebody gives a, a donation or the dana anumodana is also i rejoice in the uh, merits you are making that that is the translation of that so uh, by rejoicing and others uh, merit also there is merit to be earned so uh, this is a, a kind of a, a, a joy which is there for the uh, uh, for the others for the world and uh, the same thing is for equanimity so uh, what uh, they are saying is that uh, this is the teaching they are teaching for loving kindness compassion altruistic joy and equanimity so uh, they say that uh, so friend, uh, what uh, here is the distinction, disparity, the difference between ascetic Gautama and us. That is regarding one Dhamma teaching, other uh, regarding the uh, one manner of instruction, uh, another. So they are saying that we also uh, ask uh, our disciples to uh, uh, do the Brahma Vyaras. So what is the difference between uh, what Buddha uh, Gautama is teaching and what we are teaching? And I have told you before also that uh, uh, the practice of Brahma Viharas was done by other sects, but it was done before the time of the Buddha also. And uh, in the times where the Buddha Sasana is not there, where the Buddha's teaching are not there, that time also this uh, teaching is there. But the Buddha uses the teaching to kind of uh, uh, take you or uh, make you understand. It's a tool for uh, us to kind of uh, 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 see deeper into what is the reality. So that is the reason uh, they are just asking about what is the difference. Those uh, because neither delighted nor uh, rejected the statement of those wanderers without delighting in it, without rejecting it, they rose uh, from their seats and left thinking, we shall learn the meaning of this statement in the presence of the blessed one. So one thing the Buddha says is that once uh, uh, there is certain teaching which, are, which is uh, you are not understanding, so do not argue uh, unnecessarily. So uh, you should not accept it also. You should not reject it offhand also. Be before investigation, you should not reject any uh, kind of statement. So uh, this is the same statement the Buddha makes about uh, his teachings also. So if uh, when the Buddha has passed away and somebody comes and says that in the presence of the Buddha, I have uh, uh, heard this teaching. So you should not accept it, reject it, but go back to other teachings and see if this is teaching is matching with the other teaching. If it is matching, you keep that uh, with you, the teaching. But if it does not match, you have to discard the teaching. If somebody says, I have uh, 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 learned this teaching from uh, the disciple of the Buddha or uh, from the group of uh, monks or from uh, very senior monks, uh, you have to uh, not accept it or reject it. But check it with the other teachings of the Buddha and if it matches or if it is in line with the teaching, then only you have to accept it. And one other thing uh, important uh, is that, that it means that uh, the teachings are repeated a lot of times. So there are certain teachings which are repeated uh, many times. So there is nothing uh, kind of uh, 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 any teaching which is there, which is special teaching, which, uh, which is for a special group of people. That is not uh, the case. The teachings of the Buddha have been repeated many times. And if there is a, a certain things which uh, is not falling in line, you may set it aside. So that is not uh, also, again, do a dogmatic teaching that every word of the word is uh, uh, true and uh, every word uh, you, you have to accept. It is not the same case. We have to uh, learn the teaching and then uh, have... Uh, uh, an experience that is you uh, practice that and get the personal experience and then you can accept that teaching the buddha once asked a monk also when he is teaching do you uh, believe what i am saying he said no i don't believe uh, but with the practice i i practice it and then with my personal experience i uh, developed an understanding for it so buddha says that is the correct thing you should not just believe uh, what is said so that in the same way, they did not kind of argue. They just said, we'll go to the Buddha and ask him. Then when the bhikkhus uh, had walked the arms and uh, returned from the arms round, after their meal, they approached the Blessed One. Having paid homage to him, they sat down to one side and reported to him the entire discussion between those wanderers and themselves. The Blessed One said, 
because when wanderers of other sex speak thus, they should be asked, friends, how is the liberation of the mind by loving kindness developed? So what the Buddha is talking about is the liberation of the mind by uh, using loving kindness. They were using loving kindness as a tool for just the uh, development of the loving kindness uh, feeling. And then uh, one other thing uh, our uh, uh, other sex uh, or the uh, uh, other people they were using was they've had also limitation that is not mentioned over here. But in other suttas they have been mentioned that there were limitations. They said send loving kindness to 50 feet around you. Uh, then you send loving kindness to 100 feet. Then you send it to a, uh, a mile or 10 miles. So they used to limit that uh, field of loving kindness. But the Buddha, when he says, it is to send or to limit this. So now what the Buddha is asking is a very uh, kind of important question, which is a distinction which is making is, how is the liberation of mind, of the mind by loving kindness developed? So he's kind of, you are using loving kindness, but how is the liberation of the mind uh, uh, kind of developed by loving kindness. What does it have as its destination, its culmination, its fruit, its final goal? So for what purpose are you doing the uh, practice of loving kindness? How is the liberation of the mind by compassion developed? What does it have as its destination, its culmination, its fruits, its final goal? How is the liberation of the mind uh, uh, by altruistic joy developed? How the liberation of the mind by uh, equanimity is developed. What does it have as a destination? Its culmination, its fruits, its final goal. Being asked thus, those wanderers would uh, not be able to reply and further they would meet with vexation because they are using uh, it in a limited uh, manner and in a limited understanding. So that is the reason they will not be able to answer those questions. For what reason? Because uh, that would not be within their domain. I do not see anyone because in this world with its devas, Mara and Brahma, in this generation which is ascetics and Brahmins, its devas and humans, who would satisfy the mind with an answer to these questions except the Tathagata or the disciple of the Tathagata or one who has heard it from them. Tathagata is also a name uh, which uh, Buddha uses for himself. Uh, it is translated as thus come or thus gone. So uh, uh, this has a kind of a big philosophical discussion about the uh, 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 term Tathagata. So it is just a, uh, we can say that it is just one of the ways he addresses himself. And how uh, because is the liberation of the mind by loving kindness developed? What does it have as its destination, its culmination, its fruits, its final goal? Here, because a bhikkhu develops the enlightenment factor of mindfulness accompanied by uh, loving kindness. The enlightenment factor of equanimity accompanied by loving kindness. Based upon seclusion, dispassion, cessation, maturing and release. If he wishes, may I dwell perceiving the repulsive in the unrepulsive. He dwells perceiving the re repulsive in therein. If he wishes, may I dwell uh, perceiving the unrepulsive in the repulsive. He uh, dwells perceiving the unrepulsive therein. If he wishes, may I dwell perceiving the repulsive in the unrepulsive. In the uh, repulsive. He uh, dwells perceiving the repulsive therein. If he wishes, may I dwell perceiving the unrepulsive in the repulsive and in the unrepulsive. He dwells perceiving unrepulsive therein. If he wishes, uh, avoiding both repulsive and repulsive, may I dwell equanimously, mindful and clearly comprehending. Then he dwells therein equanimously, mindful and clearly comprehending. Or else he enters and dwells in the deliverance of the beautiful. The deliverance of beautiful also is a kind of a philosophical uh, kind of a discussions are there. Certain uh, uh, believe that it is the nimitta uh, and uh, you go into uh, absorption when you are uh, dwelling in the beautiful. But uh, the, uh, the Bhante Vimaramsi says that that is not the case. It is just uh, going into the higher arupa jhanas. That is the only meaning of the word uh, being in the beautiful. And it means the uh, attainment of the ultimate goal, which is the nibbana. So the nibbana is also mentioned in many places as the uh, beautiful. Uh, that is, which is beautiful. There is uh, uh, two ways uh, Buddha used beautifully. 
one is the physical beauty when when he says uh, uh, there is a, a chant which are uh, there uh, uh, which is saying that uh, when we, uh, we are given uh, some arms or something like that in thailand they say abhivadana sidesanicha ruddha pachayino chattaro dhamma vadanti ayu vanno sukhan balam that means that this is the advice that if you are uh, respectful to your elders then you are four things you will be getting that uh, uh, that is age that is a long a uh, long life uh, that is beauty ayu uh, vanno uh, sukhan uh, means uh, that is uh, happiness and uh, health balan so you get four things when you are respectful of your elders so over here it is a physical beauty over here he is using as a philosophical term beauty will which is the beautiful which is the only thing which is beautiful is the uh, attainment of nibbana so this is a uh, bikhus the liberation of ma uh, mind by loving kindness has the beautiful as its culmination i say for a wise uh, bikhu who has not penetrated to a superior liberation so uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, uh, what happens uh, at uh, loving kindness so that means that you will be able to um, uh, 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 go up to uh, the uh, place of the four jana that is how uh, bante vimalansi uh, interprets because after this what happens is is important after this what uh, the buddha is saying and how because of the liberation of the mind by compassion developed what does it have as its destination its culmination its fruits its final goals here because the bhikkhu develops the enlightenment factor of mindfulness and that is the whole thing which has been repeated if he wishes avoiding unrepulsive and repulsive may i dwell equanimously mindful clearly comprehending then he dwells within equanimously mindful clearly comprehending or else with a complete transcendence of perceptions of forms with the passing away of perception of sensory impingement with the non attention to perceptions of diversity aware that space is infinite he enters and dwells in the base of infinity of space because the liberation of mind by compassion has the base of the infinity of space as its culmination i say for a wise bhikkhu here who has not penetrated to a superior liberation <coughs> so we see that till uh, loving kindness uh, the rupa janas were uh, there but when you go to compassion that is uh, from uh, uh, metta to uh, uh, karuna so when you go to uh, compassion then you are going into infinite uh, space so now you are in the arupa jana so that is that aligns with what the buddha uh, uh, is saying uh, and what the bante vivaram is saying about our practice that uh, till uh, the four jana you are doing the metta practice when you are uh, going into uh, karuna or uh, compassion you are uh, in infinite space so that uh, that is kind of uh, confirmed over here then how uh, is the liberation of the mind by altruistic uh, joy developed so in this they say that because the liberation of mind by altruistic joy has a base of the infinity of consciousness at its culmination i say for a big a wise bhikkhu who has not penetrated to a superior liberation so uh, when uh, they go to uh, mudita then uh, uh, the joy factor that time you are in infinite consciousness then uh, the because the liberation of mind by equanimity has a base of nothingness as its culmination i say for a wise bhikkhu who has not penetrated to a superior liberation so uh, uh, in uh, the next stage uh, when you are in uh, the equanimity or upekha then what you are uh, 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 there is in nothingness so we see that uh, the progress happens uh, for uh, the meditator as per the buddha's teaching itself so so the bante kind of uh, is in line with the teaching of the buddha 
so that that is the uh, way the buddha kind of explains that how uh, uh, by practicing uh, this uh, brahma viharas we are progressing in the path of liberation so uh, this is uh, uh, a tool which we are using and that is the same way uh, when we consider the breathing meditation when we consider the breathing meditation the breathing meditation also culminates till the time of uh, nothingness that the time that's the time when the uh, the sensation of breathing kind of uh, a meditator loses this sensation of breathing and then he goes to the quiet mind or neither perception or non perception so that uh, whatever uh, the teaching of uh, brahma viharas or uh, breathing meditation they all culminate at one point and after that uh, uh, you are not even radiating uh, in a neither perception or quiet mind uh, or even in a breathing you are not have any sensation of breathing so you are watching with mind with mind at that point of time so that is how the teaching progresses for the uh, meditator so the, this is the uh, basic uh, uh, instructions of brahma viharas is there any questions you can uh, go uh, through any questions if you have uh bande yes i have a question so at what stage you stop radiating to all six directions is it uh the neither perception yeah. or perception stage or at the stage of in nothingness when you are in nothingness at that one point of time there will be a point where the mind becomes a little bit more still and you uh, naturally feel that you are unable to radiate that time you are, don't try to radiate but you just look at the mind and that is why the uh, it is said that the mind is watching mind you are so, just watching uh, what is happening over there and there is a, a, a perfect stillness at that point of time in nothingness now that time what happens is there are certain time you will go to neither perception or non perception and certain times you will stay in nothingness you will not know that unless uh, you have a, a feeling that uh, you are kind of blanking out without having the uh, feeling of uh, uh, sloth and torpor that uh, that time you have that feeling then what you do is uh, when before getting up 5 minutes you look at uh, what has happened in your meditation and do six r that is the post facto that is uh, six r you do so that is the time when you are not radiating so uh, so uh, so in summary at the stage of uh, equanimity you stop radiating at some stage in at uh, equanimity you stop uh, radiating say uh, when you are uh, radiating in equanimity you uh, uh, will be radiating in equanimity but then uh, mind uh, becomes calmer yeah. naturally at that point of time you should uh, stop radiating and just watch what is happening and whatever uh, is the slightest uh, uh, kind of uh, 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 activity is there if there is a uh, little bit of uh, ripple or if there is a little bit of light you see you just recognize that when you recognize automatically six hours should happen it should kind of uh, release relax uh, uh, smile and come back so you just hear that that's only when when you are uh, when you are when you are moving away from your objective meditation for a considerable time isn't it but sometimes at the stage when in equanimity mm -hmm. uh, you are quiet but you you know that there are some consciousness you know some some movements happen yeah, but you, you just know it's it's happening but yeah. you are still still on the object of meditation yes. but if you uh, feel your mind is moving like even if it is kind of wobbling a bit in, you just recognize it and it should come back to the observation so the observation should be uh, there constantly but there are certain times what would happen is you would feel that was i observing or i was not observing then also you should just uh, stay over there and sometimes you may feel that oh i was not here but i, I am here now uh, that that is a, a feeling of uh, being gaps are there that means that you are in neither perception or non perception so uh, when you are stopped radiating huh? yes sir it's a, some kind of a um, semi sleepy stage you are not sleeping no but, but you are sleeping like, yeah it is it feels like you are sleeping But you are sleeping. Say, yeah. But you are not. You are. Uh, you, the consciousness is not there, or the, the it is such a fine place that you cannot say there is consciousness. 
you cannot say there is no consciousness. It's the reason the name is kind of descriptive. Neither perception nor non-perception. But it's totally void. There's nothing there. Absolutely. Nothing blind. is yeah. Nothing is there. Nothing is there. That is the space of equanimity. But in the space of equanimity, after the space of equanimity, there is a stage which is so fine that it is finer than nothing. That is yeah. neither perception nor non-perception. So you should understand that this uh, name is a descriptive. It is you cannot say there is perception over here. You cannot say there is no perception because there is, if there is no perception, it's cessation. So the, you are uh, the perception is not there in cessation. So you cannot say there is, there is no perception. You cannot so not say there is perception because there are gaps in this space. So this is a good space. And what one should do is that one should, uh, if he recognizes that this is happening, before getting up uh, from the sitting, five minutes you should spend on seeing what has happened in the past. If you recognize certain things, you six are post facto. Okay. And then get up from the sitting. So uh, when you reach that stage of meditation, um, and for example, uh, you have experienced what I've discussed now, so next time when you start your sitting, you should stop radiating or you should start radiating and then come back to that. Yeah, you should sitting. always uh, start with radiation, yeah. uh, radiating, sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so when you are sitting, uh, you may start with all uh, direction. And then you may quickly feel that your uh, mind is going uh, quiet. But you're not going for each direction. You start immediately with all directions. Uh, yeah, with all directions. And if it goes very naturally, it may come down and be very calm in very small time. It may be one minute also. But yeah. you start with the direction. Sometimes what happens is when you are uh, had a busy day or something like that, you may be out and it may be five minutes, ten minutes, and it may come slowly, 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 and your mind will become calm. It or sometimes it like, may just come down. Uh, it's something like you're unfolding an umbrella. Just Sorry. Yeah, fast or slow. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, Bhante, I sorry, I don't have my Samyutta Nikaya with me today, but I feel like the this document you just shared, it's kind of like cut off because it stops at um the base of nothingness, and like the last sentence is like uh you know because the liberation of mind by equanimity, equanimity has the base of nothingness as its culmination i say for a wise people here who has not penetrated to a superior liberation so when does the buddha lead on to when a wise people have uh, sorry has penetrated superior liberation not sure if my question makes sense but uh, this yeah. is the way it ends, I think. So the sutta ends uh, because I told you the process of my uh, sutta, this thing. I take uh, the sutta from the Kindle and I scan it and uh, then I uh, kind of uh, do an OCR. So I just see uh, how this ends over here. Okay, I'm not sure if anyone in tonight's group has a copy of the Samyutta Nikaya. Unfortunately, I am traveling, so I don't have it with me tonight. Yes, that is how it ends. Huh? That is how uh, it ends. I saw the sutta. It ends in the same manner. Okay. So then... It seems a little uh, abrupt uh, because uh, normally a certain... Uh, uh, like they rejoiced in the teaching of the Buddha or something like that happens. So yes. Yeah. Uh, but it does uh, uh, end in that way. Yeah. It, to me, it feels like it's like cut off compared to um, a lot of those in Majima Nikai. Uh, 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 yes, yeah. There's like... A combination of something or whatever and like Bhante said you know and then the bhikkhus rejoice in the la la la, la but this was like like as though it, it's yeah this was this was that, uh, maybe this was how it was recorded or something like that or it was how it was remembered so uh, there has been certain uh, kind of uh, places where uh, there are uh, distinctions there are certain differences which are there and certain uh, times uh, this happens so this is maybe uh, they, uh, they, uh, when they were recording, they were not sure which which was the ending. They there was a dispute in the ending. Then they said, okay, the ending is not important. Uh, we'll uh, drop the ending. Or something must have happened because there were uh, five councils, I think so. 
has happened till now okay. with this nonsense. So this may be one of these names, but it does not kind of the material fact of the uh, sutta kind of remains. Mm. <laughs> Um, another comment, it's more of a comment, not so much a question, but um, over the weekend, I've been listening to a couple of uh, people with different kinds of concepts of community living um, that's happening in pockets uh, all over the world. Um, and what made me realize was the kind of uh, system or ecosystem that the Buddha had set up um, thousands of years ago was actually one that's really, really sustainable. Um, you know, having like what's um, always been spoken about in the classes, having a sangha um, that is comprising of the four, you know, the uh, bhikkhu sangha, bhikkhuni sangha, and then the laymen and the laywomen, and the cohesive uh, relationship between these four kinds of individuals um, and the kind of rules that are set up for the bhikkhus as well as the bhikkhunis and also the patimoka system, that actually um, I think is a little bit underestimated. I'm not sure, well, I underestimated it until today. Um, the um, significance of how having such a structure um, does play a large role in um, ensuring harmony, like sustainable harmony. I think the whole, you know, reciting the Patimoka and coming together and, you know, um, admitting wrongdoings and all that kind of stuff um, really, to me, makes a lot of sense. There are lots of communities out there, um, not so much where I live, but I think in Europe, some parts of Denmark are talking about like um, co-housing and stuff. I don't know if they have ideas of um, you know setting up rules or something in their communities if anyone has any thoughts on that most welcome to contact me and then the other thing I um, kind of um, lost my train of thought just a little bit um, community rules and everything are... the the rules I think are really important and the, the kind of um, what uh, sister Kema has always been talking about um, the reciprocity uh, between the monastics and the lay people and how that kind of a relationship is what's really crucial in terms of the, um, you know, protecting and sustaining the um, vasana and the, the, and the teachings of the, um, the Buddha, I think. Well, at least I speak for myself. Um, until today, I didn't realize that the significance of that kind of a structure and relationship is what can ensure that the teachings um, uh, continue. And and I'm slowly begin to. I mean, I, I kind of understand what um, Sister Kema has been talking about, but I think today it really kind of hit home that if such a structure does not it's not strongly held together there's a potential that when that starts to happen that we will start to see the teachings um slowly die off yes so what you are saying is correct and uh, just uh, by uh, uh, understanding the five precepts only uh, it becomes kind of a, uh, a society which uh, everybody follows the five precepts they are not killing each other they are not stealing from each other so there is no uh, harm uh, which is happening so there is safety in the community there is uh, the there is uh, there is nothing getting stolen or uh, and then there, uh, there is no kind of a misconduct in uh, the sexual act activity so nobody is jealous nobody is has uh, uh, revenges and fightings and all those things the speech is good uh, they don't have speech which is uh, 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 lies they they don't speak lies they don't speak uh, uh, frivolous things they don't speak cruel uh, speech. They don't speak uh, to make uh, people fight, slander. So uh, they, uh, while speaking, there is a kind of harmony in the speech. They don't, they don't uh, abuse uh, the intoxicants. And that means that they don't have uh, bar fights and all those uh, things which is uh, 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 related to those uh, health issues. 
and uh, mental issues and uh, issues of other uh, breaking down when uh, they are kind of uh, abusing the uh, intoxicants. So if you just look at a society and imagine a society which is kind of following the five precepts, then also you can see that the, the society can be uh, in a very uh, kind of a har harmonious uh, way they can uh, 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 live. But uh, Buddha was also kind of uh, pragmatic in the sense that he did not believe in utopias. So he did not kind of say that uh, try and create a utopia for yourself. Buddha was practical in the sense that there are certain things which are not in your hand, which is the uh, reason for the anicca. So there are things which, uh, which uh, kind of decay, everything decays. So a society is there, the society also decays over the time. So uh, one should be uh, aware of the, uh, the things which we can do and one should be aware of how we can influence. So one, one of the uh, Buddha's uh, disciples wanted to go in an area where, where, where they were very uh, tough people. So the Buddha uh, said that those are very tough people. Uh, how will you survive? What if they abuse you? So uh, uh, the, the Arahant said that uh, uh, if they abuse me, then I will uh, uh, say that they are uh, people who are not kind of uh, throwing stones at me. Uh, at least they are just abusing me uh, by verbally. What if they throw stones at you? Uh, so the, he says, if they throw stones at you, I'll, I'll think that they are good people. They are not at least uh, hitting me with sticks. Uh, then uh, Buddha said, what if they hit with your sticks? Uh, the Buddha, then he said that I'll be uh, grateful that they are not uh, uh, means uh, using knives and uh, kind of stabbing me. So the Buddha said, what if they stab you with a knife? So if they stab me with a knife, I'll think that this body uh, and this samsara was a burden to me and they are letting me off this burden. So even if they kill me, I will not be uh, resentful to them. So the, the Buddha kind of was uh, clear that this is a world where there are a lot of things which may happen. And we have to be resilient uh, regarding those things. And in fact, the, uh, uh, the Bhikkhu went over there. He, he had a, a good success. They, were, uh, uh, they say that there were a thousand people who became Sotapannas uh, with his teaching. But ultimately, he was actually stabbed and he, he uh, died. <laughs> because that was a kind of a rough area. So some people were jealous that uh, they were uh, uh, the community of thieves were less. They were the people who should not come for uh, the, the activities which they like. So then some people got jealous. And, but the, uh, the Buddha uh, uh, says that whatever is there, you understand the realities of the, uh, the time. You understand the reality of this place which you are there. And uh, you have to be accepting to what is happening. When you are accepting to what is happening, what is there, uh, then you will be able to handle your uh, life in a be better manner. Uh, the utopia and the concept of uh, having a perfect place is something uh, the Buddha kind of uh, does not agree with. He says that wherever you are, you uh, manage with what, what is there and uh, pro progress. So uh, yes, uh, five precepts and the... Uh, teachings of the Patimokha are kind of a very good guide. Like one of the uh, main things about uh, uh, admonishing others is uh, to know the right time, know that you in your heart are speaking with loving kindness, know that uh, uh, what is being sp spoken is for the others good. So all these uh, parameters have to be applied when you are trying to kind of correct somebody. So uh, those kind of rules can really help uh, the society uh, or a community which we are staying in. And uh, uh, that I think uh, is a very good noble thing, but we have to understand that uh, everything is unstable. And th thus we have to uh, uh, be uh, mentally kind of prepared also in that se sense uh, to, uh, to handle those situations. That is the reason we have the teaching of uh, Anicca. Uh, and anatha, uh, anicca, dukkha, anatha, that is the thing, no? Where anicca is uh, uh, impermanence which causes the dukkha. And we have to understand the uh, impersonal nature of how the uh, uh, things are happening. There is no controller because it happens from a cause and effect cycle. 
So that uh, is uh, to be understood. Yes, I think you have a question. Yeah, I think ma ma Mari, yeah. Maria, yes, uh, thank you, Bante. Yeah. Mm, I wish to mention mm. that um, something that is helping me a lot in my day-to-day -day life is that every day I take six presets mm, because on the retreat, yes. there is this six presets. Uh, yes. I take the preset to be loving and kind to myself and others. Yes. And somehow I have discovered that uh, adding this uh, added um, precept, right? Mm -hmm. uh, recommended by Bante Bimalaramsi yeah, right. is really, really beneficial because it really brings uh, the meta, eh? And they are not really presets, they are opportunities to free ourselves and, you know, and tune in to this gentle, kind, soothing approach. So right. when I hear now five presets inside myself, yes, I say six, please, six. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes, very good. Sad to sad. <laughs> very good. Yes, go. Uh, hello, Bandi. Thank you very much for your talk. I've got a, a couple of things I'd like to ask about within the sutra itself. Um, so the first is that uh, um, uh, the, the bhikkhus uh, developing the liberation of mind by loving kindness, and how is this developed? Um, uh, and here, because uh, Bhikkhu develops the enlightenment factor of mindfulness. So what is it in the practice of the Brahma Viharas that the Buddha was uh, putting forward that was different to the Brahma Viharas that the ascetics, the other ascetics were, were doing? What is it that gives it? Uh, and I think these are the seven factors of enlightenment that have been enlightenment. developed. That is uh, used what, as it now. Yeah. What is what is it? What is the difference? So the ma major difference is that they are using the uh, metta or Brahma Viharas only for the purpose of that metta. So when they are doing loving kindness, they are just doing the loving kindness. They are not developing the mindfulness or the uh, investigation or the energy factor or the joy factor or tranquility or uh, the uh, uh, the samadhi or uh, 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 and uh, equanimity. So they are not working on that Brahma Vihara's factors or the seven uh, factors of enlightenment or the 34 requisites of awakening. So those things are not worked on. Uh, they are uh, doing it as a standalone practice. The Buddha is using that practice with the uh, uh, teaching of uh, the right effort and the teaching of uh, the uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, other uh, factors of awakening. So he's using that, infusing it with the, the practice. So you get uh, awakening factors uh, in uh, practice with the Brahma Viharas. Brahma Viharas uh, have a very good uh, uh, effect on the mind and uh, has an effect on uh, the, uh, the destination which we have. Uh, like uh, uh, if you are an uh, 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 expert in the Brahma Viharas, you are guaranteed to be born in a uh, good destination. So uh, those th factors are there. But we, we are using this, uh, Buddha is using this with the right effort. And then that is being directed towards the uh, development of the uh, awakening. That is uh, of the jhanas, uh, till the fourth jhana and the arupa jhanas. And that is how it uh, kind of it differs. Yes, I yeah. Would it, would it be right then to say that uh, in the first instance of the other ascetics, uh, as it were, they're becoming absorbed in the metta, whereas the Buddha is inviting you to use the metta as a, metta as a meditation object rather than an end point? Yeah, that uh, is a very good way. Of, uh, yes, yeah. Okay, so then you see, because you see when you're drawn away from the metta and come back, it's that inquiry of right effort which then brings the enlightenment factors. 
inside. Yeah, that is a very good way of speaking. That is a, a good uh, perspective that uh, as uh, you are becoming absorbed in it, then you are unable to kind of know what is the functioning. Uh, so when you are in that uh, process uh, of uh, kind of uh, just concentrating on metta and you become one pointed in the metta, then your mind is not moving uh, or you are not able to understand the function of that uh, process or the, uh, the uh, where you are there. Uh, in which state you are there. But as it is used as a meditation object, then uh, uh, there is a, a movement which is uh, possible. And by uh, using the right effort, you are able to kind of discern uh, the things which are there, uh, which is the mindfulness, which is like uh, how to how the mind's or, or attention is moving from one thing to another and how it is impersonal and how uh, uh, the, uh, the dependent origination is important. Uh, that is the good... Uh, Bande Vimalramsi's kind of phrase <laughs> for mindfulness. So yes, that is a very good point. Yeah. Uh, may I ask one more question? Yes. Okay, a little bit later uh, down in the sutta, uh, it's described as, uh, may I, uh, if he wishes, may I dwell, uh, let's find it, may I dwell perceiving the repulsive in the unrepulsive. He dwells perceiving the repulsive therein. Uh, the, the repulsive and unrepulsive sometimes is, is translated as uh, enchantment and disenchantment. Um, so uh, can you just give a little bit more um, perspective on seeing the repulsive in the unrepulsive and also the unrepulsive in the repulsive? See, uh, there are certain factors which are there. Uh, one of the things is uh, in the uh, practice of uh, 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 in the Satipatthana, which is uh, the cemetery uh, contemplation. So uh, wh why the perception is developed is that perception is the key point through which we are looking at the world. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. there is uh, uh, the six factors. There, there are six, uh, uh, and then there is contact. Now, when there is contact, there is feeling. Now, in the feeling, there is uh, the craving, okay? But the next step is craving. So, when there is feeling, there is perception over there. Without perception, there is no feeling. Because if you are having a feeling, then there is a perception. And uh, so, that perception kind of drives us towards uh, the next point, which is craving, which is I like it or I don't like it. So the feeling is kind of perceived as uh, likable or uh, unlikable. So that is the kind of pivot point for the person, uh, uh, perspective of uh, is how he moves around in the world. Okay. So uh, when uh, 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 the ceremony con contemplation is given is because to balance. See, every uh, uh, practice is to balance. Okay, so uh, one, uh, 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 what happens is there is a young monk who comes and he is kind of naturally attracted uh, to uh, the uh, body, you know. So when he is seeing something which is uh, 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 attractive, okay, so then he is perceiving it as attractive, but he has to develop uh, the perception that this body is also unattractive. One uh, way the Buddha teaches in the sutta is that you look at a person or a, 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 a opposite uh, 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 or the uh, sex you are interested in. Uh, uh, the, uh, there is a young uh, female. Say. The, uh, the female is there. You see her as a, uh, uh, as a beautiful person. But you remember that after, uh, say, 20 years, 30 years, there will be wrinkles in the face. And you kind of uh, kind of uh, remember that uh, when the wrinkles are there, the the, the face is uh, kind of uh, uh, disfigured. Then there there is a point when the uh, the body kind of uh, passes away. There is there, there is no consciousness, and there is just the body. And then there is a stages of the body which uh, goes through the body. So now what you are doing is you are perceives, uh, perceiving the uh, uh, at, at, uh, so what is attractive as something which is unattractive. Okay, then there are certain things which are there, uh, which are kind of uh, fearful, uh, like uh, you go to a, a, a forest and sit in a forest, there, there are certain things which are fearful for you. So what you kind of perceive them that this is the uh, way uh, to kind of develop the mind, this is the way to kind of get rid of my 
uh, attachment to uh, my bodies, then you perceive that these are the things which are helping me in the meditation. So then you kind of perceive those things as uh, something which is uh, useful for us, as, as attractive to us. Like there is pain is there in the meditation. Uh, one way of looking at it is that this is the this is a teacher. Pain is a teacher. Uh, which is teaching us how my uh, how my attachments are there with this pain. So in this way, uh, you kind of perceive. So that way, you are kind of uh, uh, developing your uh, perspective or a handle on how you can manage what has come up to be in the direction of your goal. So uh, Buddha's uh, teaching is always there for you to take you in the direction of the goal of awakening. So you have to see that how you can use the current situation or current uh, the, the, the state of mind or state of uh, being uh, uh, to kind of direct it towards a, a place where you want to go, which is the uh, understanding of the mind and how this uh, process is working. Uh, does that work? Uh, thank you, Bhante. That was very thorough. Thank you. Okay. Okay, May, you had a question? Uh, yeah, Bante, uh, I just wanted to um, add on to what um, Hugh was commenting when uh, both of you were just discussing. So what happened here in this conversation is literally what's still happening today, 2,600 years later, correct me if I'm wrong, because um, the main difference that we see um, in other um, so-called uh, mindfulness or meditation practice is the um, right effort or the six hours isn't really there. So I'm just speaking from my own experience, for example, in the past when I'm, let's say, using loving kindness still as an so-called object of meditation, the difference I find is that when a thought comes up or when a um, tension in the body comes up because of not having the knowledge of what, how to infuse uh, right effort into it, what happens is then we tend to have the craving of pushing away um, whatever tension or tightness or thoughts that come up. And by doing so, um, I guess two things can happen. One is, aversion starts to appear and we don't know what to do with it or um, also the other form of craving where we're craving for the nice feeling of loving kindness and we want to keep it there and are not willing to see it um, move, moving away right. so that's two ends of the spectrum of craving happening right within us um, thinking that we are meditating uh, loving kindness, if that all makes sense. Correct. So that is what sometimes sometimes uh, uh, many of the uh, initial students also have these problems, is that they are uh, saying that I don't have that enough loving kindness. I don't have the proper loving kindness. I don't have uh, the loving kindness for a long time. So those things are uh, coming up because they want to control it, not just observe it, but control it. When you observe it, it, it has its own life. It develops its own because it's a cause and effect process. It will develop it on its own. But when you try to control it, you are kind of hindering it by the fear, as you said, of losing it or the uh, kind of uh, uh, craving for getting it. So those things kind of ha uh, hinder when you are not understanding the what, what is the proper context in which, which we are doing the practice. When you understand the pro proper context, then that will not happen. Um, sorry, Bhante, but just to add on, and again, this is just um, me speaking about myself. I don't know about other people, but um, in terms of hitting a wall and stuff like that, it could also be because um, there are um, serious blockages that we need to clear first um, with uh, the uh, like branching out to the forgiveness practice and um, I guess sometimes it's a little bit tricky especially for beginners um, to know when it's um, so-called I uh, controlling or wanting to hang on to the um, so-called loving kindness feeling or the nice feeling or when is it that I'm really hitting a brick wall because there's some serious blockage that I need to first um, clear through with um, forgiveness. So I think that's probably the main reason why it's very useful to have a guide 
or to have these sort of sessions where we have these um, discussions and where people um, you know, aren't afraid to ask questions and stuff because when we're trying to do it alone, I, I speak from experience, I've been kind of, kind of doing meditation for like, you know, 20 years or so and have always met stumbling block after stumbling block and only when I realized that the main reason is serious blockages that just needed to be clear through um, doing forgiveness and um, it's not all cleared yet but a lot of it has cleared and just by clearing those blockages instantly like what Hugh said in one of the um, previous Zoom sessions we don't even have to think I mean let's put it wrongly we don't even have to say I want to radiate or I want to feel like there's some loving kindness feeling it's just like we just think it and it naturally just happens. I think just from my own self-experience, it's kind of hard to do that if we are blocked. And it's even worse for a beginner if we don't know we're blocked, <laughs> if that all makes sense. So yeah. the guide's uh, uh, kind of primary uh, goal is that uh, to understand uh, what is happening because uh, uh, Bhante also says that uh, we can come to know what is happening by what you are saying. So we know what you are saying is because we have uh, experience with a lot of people and we have experience with ourselves also. So uh, we uh, kind of uh, can know that, uh, say, if it is going to one direction or the other. One direction is uh, that uh, you are having a blockage which you have has to be removed or another direction which is, there is a lot of control you want, wants to exert on that. So that is just a kind of a uh, uh, giving a perspective uh, from the other perspective, uh, you will be gaining because you are a kind of, a, uh, uh, you are kind of a prisoner of your perspectives. So it is difficult for one to kind of correct oneself. So that is the reason uh, the, the, uh, the role of the guide kind of becomes important. Yes, that is uh, 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 right. And you have to understand what is happening uh, when to ask, uh, and uh, that is also uh, one of the things uh, when the previous Sunday when we took the sutra is to seek uh, the guidance. That is also a highest blessing. Uh, you uh, you go and meet uh, and listen to uh, ascetics. So the, those are the things which uh, are being mentioned by the Buddha. So when you are doing that continuously, then it will kind of helps you balance of your life. That's very good. Yes. A very good perspective on yourself also. That is, uh, you should have that kind of an insight into what you are doing and uh, where you are. So that helps a lot. Good. Is there any other questions? So uh, we will kind of end this now. And I hopefully, uh, Sister Kema, kind of, uh, I get, I, I will, I'll be calling her just now once again. And uh, we'll see uh, how uh, we proceed. Uh, but uh, I may invite other uh, teachers also uh, or other uh, people also if uh, Sister Kema is in a long term, which is not able to kind of come up uh, uh, for a period of time, then I'll be inviting others to come and uh, give the Sunday sessions. So we hear from uh, different uh, voices. And uh, Sunday, uh, Wednesday also, I, I had a, uh, I have a plan to kind of call Raju Dinesh once for a Wednesday session. So I, I can call him and then uh, we can, I, I can maybe invite you also one of those days on Sunday. Uh, you, you are free on Sundays? Or not all Sundays? Um, on, on many Sundays, but not all. So um, let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah we will uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of coordinate regarding that. So uh, we can kind of invite. So we can hear from more voices. Uh, there are uh, teachers who are there who are doing uh, their work, which are uh, good work they are doing, but they are uh, online. So we will kind of get more perspectives, and that that kind of helps. Uh, 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 one of the things I uh, remember is uh, one of the uh, days I was uh, 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 watching a, a documentary about uh, some uh, psychedelics a long, long time ago. And uh, the person uh, went into, a, uh, I don't know the substance he took, I think MDMA or DMA or something like that uh, the person had taken and uh, he went to a trip. 
and when he came back, uh, they, uh, he told uh, he was asked the question, "What what is the secret of life?" kind of thing. Uh, the, he uh, that was the question. With this, uh, he had taken that uh, substance and he had gone to the trip. And when he came back, uh, he said that uh, to look at life from many different angles. That was the uh, thing. So that, the, then uh, that was not the time I had any idea over the Buddha's teaching. But uh, when I'm going through the Buddha's teaching and uh, understanding dependent origination, I understand the, uh, uh, the importance of perspective and how Buddha also teaches it from very different perspectives to different people. Uh, when he goes to a, a fire uh, worshippers, then he uh, teaches in the way of the fire. Everything is burning. That contact is burning. This is burning. So the uh, uh, and then sometimes he teaches in the way of not self, and sometimes he uh, teaches in a different manner. So why he is doing it is he is using many different perspectives, and he is using and uh, uh, tailoring their perspectives. So by hearing different teachers, you are uh, learning from different kind of angles the teaching. So that kind of helps. Uh, so we will hope that we kind of are able to invite uh, more uh, teachers and uh, uh, to this platform and uh, her, uh, listen from this thing because you uh, kind of perfectly summarize this difference, you know, that uh, is a very good uh, summary. I will use that in the past uh, difference between loving kindness by uh, the other uh, sects and by the Buddha. So that was a very kind of concise way of uh, putting it. So we will uh, uh, try and uh, uh, kind of keep going uh, and uh, we'll see how we can help uh, sister also. I'll be kind of uh, uh, getting in uh, touch with others through the, uh, the email chain. So we'll try and uh, do something for her also. Okay, so we'll uh, call it a day. Is there any questions? No questions? Any questions? No? Okay. <laughs> Then we'll share the merits. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So I got a bell uh, which uh, Sister Kema likes to end the talk. Okay, Is thank it audible? you. Man. No? <laughs> very faint. Not very, very faint. Okay. It is very faint. <laughs> I have to do it uh, like this. Okay. <laughs> okay, then. Thanks for coming, everybody. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye.